People often ask when I first became interested in space. Well, I can trace it all back to a book my mother brought home when I was a kid. It was called simply Planets. And I still have it. This book is actually an art book showing illustrations of what it might be like to stand on the surfaces of the different planets. Illustrations were all we had back then because we hadn't been to the planets yet. The space age was just beginning. But this book inspired me as a seven-year-old kid. It showed me that the Earth is just one member of a family of very, very different worlds that exist out there in space. When the race to the moon happened, I figured it wouldn't be long before I'd be visiting those planets myself. Well, that hasn't happened yet, but I did get to do the next best thing. The launch control team said everything went perfect. In 1977, NASA launched Voyager. It was the most ambitious mission of the time, and I drove my motorcycle down to Florida to watch it all. Voyager would visit Jupiter, Saturn, Uranus, and Neptune, taking advantage of a rare conjunction where those planets lined up on the same side of the sun. And every time I would visit the Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California from where Voyager was controlled to watch this primary exploration of other worlds happen in real time. But there was one planet Voyager could not reach, Pluto. The ninth planet, and back then it was a planet, was not in line with the others, so Voyager couldn't pass close to it. We have ignition and liftoff of NASA's New Horizons spacecraft on a decade-long voyage to visit the planet Pluto. So this the... latest mission, called New Horizons, was sent just to Pluto to complete our reconnaissance of the planets. Now Pluto is very, very far away from here. It's about a five billion kilometer trip just to get there. And to give you an idea of how far away that is, let's build a model of our entire solar system, the sun and all the planets, including Pluto, that fits within Canada or within North America. So on that scale, the sun would be about one kilometer across, which is about the size of Victoria Harbor. That's about a kilometer to the far side there. That's the sun. Uh, Mars would be around Hope, BC. Jupiter would be in the Okanagan, then the distances get really large. Saturn would be in Medicine Hat, Alberta. Uranus would be just west of Winnipeg. Neptune would be just east of Sault Ste. Marie, Ontario. And Pluto would be in Baltimore, Maryland, which is where mission control for the New Horizons happens to be. That's why I'm going to Baltimore. Oh, one more thing. The reason I'm taking this particular motorcycle, it happens to be called a Voyager. So I'm taking Voyager to Pluto. Pluto exists in a cold realm where ices dominate. In fact, Pluto is only one of thousands, perhaps millions of large snowballs that form a ring around our solar system called the Kuiper Belt. That's why Pluto lost its status as a planet. So many other objects like it have been found out there. When Voyager journeyed out into this region, it got a glimpse of what ice worlds are like in the moons that surround the big planets. These moons give us a hint of what we might find at Pluto. Europa, going around Jupiter, is completely covered in ice. The ice is broken and has moved around like Canadian lakes during spring breakup. That means the ice on Europa is floating. It's been calculated that under the ice of this moon of Jupiter is a saltwater ocean containing more water than all the oceans on Earth. Perhaps that's where we should be looking for life. Enceladus, a moon going around Saturn, is also covered in ice, also showing cracks, but something more. Gas and ice are escaping from the South Pole in huge geysers. This kind of was a big paradigm shift. Dr. Carolyn Porco is a specialist in ice worlds and worked on the Voyager project. And so this has made it just absolutely thrilling that there are other bodies of liquid water suffused with organic materials, having all the hallmarks of an extraterrestrial habitable zone. And that's why these ice worlds have just become 
so important in our understanding of the origin of life in our solar system and elsewhere. Can you see Mount Baker over there on the horizon? It looks like it's floating in midair. It's a beautiful snow-capped cone-shaped volcano. It's one of a whole line of them that run down the west coast of North America. Volcanoes happen here on the Earth because heat inside the planet is bursting out through holes in the ground. Well, ice worlds get hot too, but for different reasons. They get hot because of tides. In the same way that our moon picks our ocean up and down twice a day because of its gravity, ice worlds are tugged by the gravity of either other moons or their planet. And they get squeezed and released and squeezed and released, and that generates heat on the inside. If the ice on the outside is cracked, that heat comes out, and you get a geyser or an ice volcano called cryovolcanism. But when that happens, you don't get cone-shaped mountains like that, because ice worlds are quite small. Pluto's smaller than our moon, so the gravity is really low. The stuff that comes out of the ground doesn't fall right back down immediately and make a pile like that. Instead, it'll either spread all over the world and give it a nice frosty coating, or it'll just blow off into space altogether. So what that means is that if you were to stand beside an ice volcano, it would be snowing up. The last ice world Voyager saw was Triton, circling the planet Neptune. Many believe this is the closest to what we will see at Pluto. Triton is so far and so cold, there are three kinds of ice. Water ice, like we have here on Earth, that freezes white. Methane ice that starts out blue, then turns pink after it sits in the sun. And nitrogen ice, which is frozen air. I'm expecting to see Pluto look like Triton. I'm hoping that I'm entirely wrong and that Pluto completely knocks us for a loop and looks nothing like anybody expected because that's what explorers want to see. We want to see something brand new. So, will we see colorful ices on Pluto? Will we see ice volcanoes? Will there be an ocean under the surface? Well, perhaps. Or, what's more likely, will we see things we never expected? That's why we explore. That's why we go places we've never been before. It's knowledge for the sake of knowing it. And the one lesson that I've learned in 40 years of chasing these missions to planets, no matter what we thought before, the planets always surprise. I gotta hit the road. See you at Pluto.